It's time for Alamogordo Town News on Crazy Radio. I'm Anthony Lucero. When it comes to news on 95.1 FM, weather always comes first. Dangerously hot conditions will persist across the southern plains and lower Mississippi Valley, while simmering heat builds throughout California's Central Valley. That all begins tomorrow. Severe thunderstorms and heavy rain threats for the East Coast today. A moderate risk for excessive rainfall has been posted for portions of the southeastern coast. Showers and storms for the Four Corners and Southwest over the next few days. And active weather patterns will produce some pre-Independence Day fireworks in the northern plains and Midwest. Closer to home, daily thunderstorm chances will continue, with Wednesday expected to be the most active day. Temperatures will remain warm, generally a few degrees above average. We'll have another look at the weather following this news. Here's the latest information on the fires. The South Fork Fire is sitting at 17,569 acres. Salt Fire is just under 8,000, so a total combined burn area of 25,000 acres. South Fork is 79% contained. Salt is 84% contained. And both fire crews are staffed with 17 crews, 3 helicopters, 25 engines, 2 bulldozers, and 8 water tenders, a total of 725 personnel. But when it rains, it pours. Literally. The evacuation order for the Upper Canyon area of Redoso remains in effect after Saturday's flooding. The village of Redoso posted on Facebook images of the Rio Redoso, which runs right next to the racetrack. Flooding caused the cancellation of a few races on Saturday, and the track was damaged, but not a total loss. Races did resume yesterday. The Diocese of Las Cruces administration, including the Bishop of the Alamogordo Knights of Columbus and the current priest at St. Joseph Apache Mission in Mescalero, have been accused of coming in during the night into the church and stealing two treasured pieces of art, including the Apache Christ, claiming that the diocese owns everything on the grounds. Mary Serna of the St. Joseph Apache Mission in Mescalero posted a phone call between herself and a deacon on Facebook. I was just made aware that the Apache Christ in St. Joseph's Apache Mission has been stolen. Not stolen, just removed. Just removed? Yeah. By who? By Father Trudy and the Knights of Columbus and Oscar Padilla, our chief property risk manager. What was the name again? I'm sorry. So, yes, it's removed. Okay, but by whom is what I'm wondering. By the pastor. By the pastor. And he got people to sneak on to the reservation at night and go into the church? Sneak on to the reservation at night and, and to come into the church, which is... Our property, yes. Is it your property? Because um, it doesn't say anything in the... It's in trust by the Catholic... Missions, not... Indian not missions, yes. Not, and, and not, Las Cruces, uh, not Las Cruces Diocese. Yes. But you're not, in, you're not Catholic Indian Missions. We, we, yes, we are. We are, we are part of the, It's under the local authority of the local bishop. Sarda reported yesterday mid-afternoon of the return of the paintings to the church. The artwork is believed to belong to the parishioners and not the church itself. So perhaps the church should review the commandments. Specifically, thou shalt not steal. The outdoor watering schedule is in full effect for the city of Alamogordo. If your house number ends in 1357 or 9, you may water your lawn on Sundays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. If your house number ends in 0246 or 8, you may water on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. All watering must take place before 9 a.m. and after 6 p.m. We also heard from Tularosa Mayor Debbie Cooksey, who shared the village's similar schedule. So our watering schedule for right now is the odd members water on Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. The even members water on Tuesdays, Thursday, and Sunday, and nobody waters on Monday. Cooksey also shared why the schedule is needed. Well, we don't use as much water. I mean, I know we get our water from the creek, and everybody thinks that we have tons of water. But as you well know, if you've done any studies or heard any people talk about it, our creek is going down, decreasing in water every year. So we're trying to do this to keep our water. That's the main purpose of it, you know. New Mexico water is gold. If you've got water, you're rich. And we're trying to keep our village, you know, running with, and if we can conserve water, that's what we're supposed to be doing. If someone is caught not abiding by the water schedule, that individual could be fined. The Alamogordo Parks and Recreation Department presents the Adopt a Spot at the Alameda Park Zoo program. 
I spoke with Sven Sears. The Alamogordo Parks and Recreation Department has taken on the Adopt-a-Spot program that was formerly run uh, by Keep Alamogordo Beautiful. Upon taking it over, we decided to expand our reach. We reached out to the zoo, and now the zoo is a spot that people can adopt. It's just volunteering to go out and keep your adopted spot clean. And if you need some more information? All you have to do is go to our website, the City of Alamogordo website, and then the quickest way to get there is to search adopt or adopt a spot. Once you find the page, you'll put in your application, you'll watch a short training video and sign some releases and waivers, and then from there you're just able to clean your spot once a quarter to maintain its adoption. You can also call the Alamogordo Parks and Recreation Department at 575-439-4269. Well, today is Monday. That means we get an update from Animal Village NM. Hi, this is Sunny Eris with Animal Village NM with an update for you about what's going on with Ruidoso Pets and Animal Village NM. When the fires first hit and the responders were up and FEMA was up there the second day, recovery efforts and mopping up so that others like cadaver dogs, etc., could get in. Animal Village and M, I was allowed in also to look for missing pets. I was working with a team of firefighters and other first responders. Luckily, because uh, the firefighters were able to pull our van out of the ditch when a newly formed ditch started to eat our tires and we couldn't get out. But anyway, so uh, that was day two. We were trying to find uh, missing pets, and then we also were able to transport um, six burn victim kitties and one dog to Roswell to a veterinarian there who was waiting to receive the pets, working with a group up there. Thank you, Sashawa. That day and thereafter, we set up a triage unit at Albertson's Market in front. Thank you, Albertson's. And we're able to immediately start giving out pet food before anybody else was, and supplies, halters, leashes, some of our former shelter supplies, harnesses, muzzles, you name it, anything that pet owners would need after a disaster, we were able to be giving to them for free. At the same time, of course, we were still transporting burn victims. Sometimes those trips were six hours each to Roswell because of checkpoints. But the second day, we were allowed to go through checkpoints so that was no longer an issue, but we had flooding. So thereafter, for the last, um, oh, I don't know, for the next 10, 11 days, we maintained our 911 cart corral in front of Albertsons giving away, but then we also at the same time moved into uh, lost pet help. To this date, we have trapped nine cats, some of whom were reunited with their owners, one of whom is in my bathroom and one of whom is in my spare room. So as my home diminishes, the number of kitties rescued is getting bigger. Please, we need your help more than ever. If you think you have to have a shelter, if you stopped helping, you used to help, please start giving again. The Animal Village NM Pup Date was sponsored by Blue Sky Counseling. Sunny Harris has been working herself to the bone, so we do want to recognize that and thank her very much. Help her any way you can, please. Visit AnimalVillageNM.org. That's AnimalVillageNM.org. The Alamogordo Chess Club has their weekly meetings at Plateau Espresso today and every Monday from 4 until 7. It is casual chess. Pair up with whomever is available. There are no membership requirements or fees. Simply show up with a board, set it up, and play. All are welcome. News from around the state in just a moment. This is Alamogordo Town News on Crazy Radio. I'm Anthony Lucero. Directory Plus is the right size book. It's the book if you need a phone book. That's what just one person has to say about Directory Plus. With its red cover, features, colorful yellow pages, and lots more, it's no wonder people all over use Directory Plus. It has so much more information. You can cross-check phone numbers or addresses or pretty much anything. Look on the plus side. Directory Plus. I'm a big fan of Directory Plus. Local news from local perspectives. From local voices. Alamogordo GordoTownNews.org. Local sports, local events, and local happenings, and more. Nonprofit owned and operated by Second Life Media. We are Otero County. AlmogordoTownNews.org. Heard daily on Crazy KALH Radio 95.1. Albuquerque officials are investigating a shooting which occurred yesterday around 1 p.m. 
The police responded to reports of a shooting and a man was found and pronounced dead at the scene. No other details were available as of news deadline. Sutherland Park Fire helped to rescue six people suffering from heat-related injuries in three separate incidents on Saturday. Three suffered life-threatening injuries and the others had what is called non-life-threatening injuries. Four of those people were placed in the ice baths as part of the response. All six were taken to the hospital for treatment of their injuries. The Donna Anna Fire Rescue and Border Patrol were also involved in these rescues. A semi-truck packed with 63 migrants was discovered when it was stopped at a checkpoint near Juarez on Saturday. Most of the migrants were from Guatemala and Ecuador. Most were single adults. They were taken to a Mexican immigration station. Three families and three unaccompanied minors were taken to shelters. This comes as Mexico continues to stop migrants from coming north who do not have the necessary humanitarian permits. An estimated 2,000 people in Albuquerque were without power Saturday night. As of yesterday morning, that number was down to 3,000. Albuquerque Mayor Tim Keller spoke at a press conference yesterday. You know, there's lots of recovery, whether it's basic cleanups, whether it's different uh, impacts that occur with our transit system or other city um, services that we provide. Luckily for us, I will acknowledge it's a Sunday morning, which is really good because uh, if, if the situation would be a lot worse, actually, if it was during the week. Hundreds of people were still without power in Cruces. They've also been dark since Saturday. According to the El Paso Electric Outage Map, there's still around 450 people without power in Cruces. El Paso Electric confirmed Saturday that the outages were weather-related but did not elaborate any further. On Sundays, you might see people dressed in medieval outfits at the park. I wanted to know more, so I contacted Nicholas Hunter of the Shire of White Mountain. That's the local group of the Society for Creative Anachronism. It is a group of historical enthusiasts that make it a point to recreate characters and, and, and way of, of life from 600 to 1600 A.D., so basically medieval and, and Renaissance times. It basically is comprised of a lot of different hobbies and, and, and crafts, anywhere from cooking and camping to uh, fencing and fighting, clothes making, brew making, and uh, it, it's really just a lot of fun. If you want to take part or maybe learn some more. We do have a local uh, a Facebook page for our local group. It's called Shire of White Mountain. That's a Facebook group. But if anybody uh, is just looking for more information on the organization at all, SCA.org is probably the best website. You can hear this interview in its entirety on the Crazy Radio YouTube channel. Weather's next. This is Alamogordo Town News on Crazy Radio. I'm Anthony Lucero. This is Lieutenant William Skaggs with Alamogordo Fire Department. The 4th of July is almost here. The city of Alamogordo will not be having a fireworks display this year. Do you know what fireworks are allowed within the city limits of Alamogordo? The ordinance is pretty clear. Anything louder than a cap gun or higher than 10 feet is not allowed within the city limits. Our inspection division makes sure that all vendors selling fireworks within the city limits of Alamogordo only sell fireworks that are allowable by city ordinance. If you purchase fireworks outside of the city limits of Alamogordo, make sure that they comply with our ordinances. If you choose to shoot off fireworks, please make sure you do them in an area that's free of combustibles and in a safe manner. Alamogordo Fire Department wishes everybody a happy and safe 4th of July. Your crazy radio spot on weather forecast for the Tularosa Basin today calls for sunny skies. There's a 20% chance of showers and storms. Winds gusting as high as 16 miles per hour. Tonight, mostly clear with a 20% chance of showers and storms. Sunday tomorrow with a 40% chance of showers and storms. Winds gusting as high as 13. Your high today in the basin, 95. Low tonight of 73. High tomorrow of 96 degrees. In Cloudcroft, sunny skies today with a 40% chance of showers and storms. Winds gusting as high as 18 miles per hour. Partly cloudy skies tonight with a 30% chance of showers and storms. Winds gusting as high as 14. Mostly sunny tomorrow with a 60% chance of showers and storms. Winds gusting as high as 16. Your high today in Cloudcroft, 74. Low tonight of 54. High tomorrow, 75 degrees. Local breaking news can be found on our website, alamogordotownnews.org, and learn more about Crazy Radio by visiting kalhradio.org. Also, check out the Crazy KALH Radio YouTube channel. That's where we post our daily newscasts, complete interviews, and other information which concerns everyone in the Tularosa Basin. Be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to our channel if you've not done so already. That way, you too can remain informed of the goings-on in the Tularosa Basin. That concludes today's edition of Alamogordo Town News on Crazy Radio. I'm Anthony Lucero.